Good morning. My name is Samantha Goyret, and I am one of the co-managers of the Martin Farmers Market uh, with my friend Caroline Ideas. We are serving as new co-managers this year, and we have lots of information to share with you for all farmers markets in Tennessee. Um, today, we would like to share with you some customer behaviors at markets and tips for helping farmers market vendors increase sales and customer satisfaction. So let's see if I go to the next slide. There we go. So how do we get more people to buy more at the farmer's market? This is always a good question. Today, we're going to go over um, a couple different mechanisms to increase your sales at your farmer's market. So there are a couple things. One is visualizing merchandising. How do people see things with their eyes? Um, customer segmentation, data collection, and customer experience. So the, the main question is how are we improving the customer experience to improve sales? And it's all about the experience at farmer's markets. Each of us have, has a, different flavors to offer to our communities and they're each farmer's market, especially in Northwest Tennessee, is very unique um, in how they serve their customers and their community. Other than fruits and vegetables, what kind of information do I need on my product label? So this is really important, especially uh, for food safety standards. Um, and we'll just go over some tips and tricks about how to label your products appropriately. Um, so that way they are liable or they are, they are legitimate um, with regards to the Tennessee Department of Health Standards and the Tennessee, Tennessee Department of Agriculture as well. So all food, except fresh fruits and vegetables sold at farmers markets must be properly labeled. This is really important. And the label must contain several different elements. You'll see there on the right of the screen, um, an example of chocolate chip cookies, um, but um, other things uh, uh, like, um, you know, food preserves, um, cookies, any baked products fall in line with this. So you should usually, you know, you want, you know, the common name of the food on top and the place and name of business of the manufacturer, packer, or distributor. Um, an accurate statement of the quantity of contents in terms of weight, measure, or count. So start with the, the um, first ingredient that has the most. Um, so a lot in baked goods is usually flour, um, and then um, include those ingredients. Another important um, part is um, if any food product contains one of the eight major food allergens, which is milk, eggs, fish, crustacean shellfish, like shrimp, um, tree nuts, peanuts, wheat, and soy. And that ingredient must be shown on the label if it is included in your product. Um, now, if there is um, a product that is fabricated from two or more ingredients, the common or usual name of such ingredient should be included as well. And no sh food shall be sold at the farmer's market that contains poisonous or um, deleterious substances that is adulterated in any way. So like, no, no poison. <laughs> we don't want to poison our customers. <laughs> that would be bad. <laughs> so how do we get more customers to notice each individual producer at the market. What impressions are we giving our customers? And so let's talk about the eyeballs and how they move around. Um, the, the eye has, you know, a certain way to be able to see things and eyes serve like a pilot to visualize and kind of rapidly scan what is available and hones in on the prime candidates for a purchase. Um, so this, uh, the eyeball actually, you know, feeds information to the brain, which helps close the sale. So how can we use our cone of vision from the customers to our greatest abilities? So three-fourths of the muscles in our eyes are used for horizontal movement, not vertical. But as the eye scans horizontally, visual attention is drawn by vertical strips while we are traveling. So take an example in the supermarket, um, you've got, you know, I, um, you know, the like little side things that, um, and 
and labels and different objects where your eye is just drawn to that, even though you're scanning horizontally. So how do we take advantage of that at the farmer's market? You should take advantage of vertical space. So if you have uh, maybe a sign that you could put out by your stand, um, something that is long, elongated and kind of shares what products you have, that is very, very helpful. It could be homemade, it could be store-bought, it could be um, you know Pinterest enhanced. <laughs> Also, customers are drawn to layers of dimension, but how high should those layers be? You should take, you know, the maximize your space by using all three dimensions, both height, width, and depth. Um, the average customer will reach, you know, two to three feet into the display without feeling awkward or inconvenience. And this is um, from data um, that has been researched through Grow New York City. And a lot of these slides are actually from Grow New York City. So thank you, Grow New York City, for letting us use them. Um, also, you know, using like wooden boxes or crates or bushel baskets, that helps create the depth and height on your farmer's market table or stand. Um, sloping displays are very nice uh, because it creates a more open feeling without expanding the aisle width or the floor level. And the old saying is that eye level is by level, but that's not really true. The true it's sweet spot is between the waist and the shoulder. So right here, you wanna have all of your products between that and a normal person's um, height. So the eye is also attracted to colors. Um, that's what I love about farmer's markets. There's so many different colors and so many beautiful products to look at. Um, but the eye, the human eye can see blocks of colors better. Um, yellow is the color that can be seen from the furthest away, which is interesting. Also, um, generally put the brightest product out in front and at the corners of your stand because that helps create contrast. And so contrast of like light versus dark, rough versus smooth, large versus small, that helps build the interest and the drama and the effect that a person's eye will get visually attracted to by your stand. Also, the color of your, your table, if you use um, you know, a, a, a tablecloth, that helps. Um, signs are also really good. So anything that kind of enhances the color and attraction of your table is very helpful to induce customers to come your way and visit your table. Um, so here are a couple um, examples of eh, kind of iffy displays. They don't really, they don't really um, get the display, but um, afterwards, you can see different different ways and how to um, to use your visualization. So let's keep on going. How can a vendor get more people to slow down and consider making a purchase? Um, so having directional flow in a farmer's market, um, it's very helpful for the, the managers to establish this, but also placing bags at the entry point of the stand or cashier box at the end um, helps also with the flow. It's important to create like a user-friendly space that's kind of not cluttered or overcrowded because those decrease sales because people just have too much to look at. So having that space and being able to visually um, sell your product is very helpful. But just by adding just a few extra feet in between the rows in any farmer's market helps increase sales as well. So you don't want like a cluttered um, farmer's market space because there's just really, there's just no room to see or to grasp everything that's available. Um, and beware of the butt brush effect. If you see that people are kind of scooting through each other and trying to scoot around, um, you should probably reconsider how your tables are arranged. So how do you get more people to buy more products at the market? Oops, I went back. I want to go forward. Okay, um, so asking questions is always good. Uh, make a suggestion. Hey, would you like to uh, buy some beets? They're really good for you. Or try placing um, products that are cooked together, um, like potatoes next to garlic, or have some recipe cards available that uses your products in those recipes. Um, you can offer multiple varieties of one product and expand the taste or purchase of 
the quantity of your clientele and the product layout should be clear and authoritative. So it should be really easy for people to understand what products are available, how much are they, um, so they can make those quick decisions and possibly purchase your product. Um, also, making deals. People love deals. Two for one, five for three. Um, anything like that is great. Even if it really doesn't change your price points, just having that deal is really enticing. So shoppers are guided by very shallow clues. This is cheaper than that, or it just feels like a good deal rather than really the knowledge or actually thinking about how much everything is costing. Um, for example, tuna fish, you buy 10 for $10. Oh, that's a great deal. Um, or, you know, the discount game works for everybody and the customer gets their discount kind of dopamine hit. They get, you know, a thrill about it because they think they're saving money and people do save money at farmer's markets. Um, plus it's good to shop local. Um, the other thing is active retailing. So, um, be nice, being nice to people and asking people, hey, how are you doing today? Can I help you with anything? Just offering that, that customer satisfaction will help entice more people to come to your stand and get to know them. You can share your knowledge about your products, what's included, what's it's good for, how is it grown, um, show confidence. Um, I know sometimes it's really hard to, you know, engage in the public and be a little shy, but if you show that confidence um, and charisma, it really attracts more customers to your table. Also, you know, for repeated customers, it's really good to get to know their name um, and also share your story and know their story. Like, hey, how's, how's little Sally doing? She's not at the market today. Where is she? Um, you know, something like that. Know, know their family story. A little bit about their story goes a long way. And also let them get to know you. Like, hey, um, I'm Sam. I'm from Barefoot Gardens. We totally go barefoot at our garden. We're all natural. And look at our products. Wouldn't you like to buy from us? Um, the number one food trend this year is transparency. So the more transparent you could be about your product, um, the better. Additional sensory appeal is wonderful by offering samples. So when you go to the farmer's market, a lot of people want to eat something um, and samples are always a big hit. Um, you know, um, it's kind of based on a trial and error. Some people might have never tried eggplants, but if you offer an eggplant sample, then they might be willing to purchase that eggplant. Um, so when you're salivating, you're much less a disciplined shopper. You kind of want to buy more. And when we buy things today, more than ever, it's based on trial and touch, just engaging our senses, the smells, the taste, the texture, um, virtually all, all unplanned purchases and many planned ones too, come as a result of the shopper seeing, touching, smelling, tasting something that promises pleasure, if not total fulfillment. Who doesn't love a sweet cherry tomato? Um, also loyalty programs are very beneficial. You can create like little cards to get repeat customers every um, farmer's market day. Um, you know, you reward the, reward the loyal shoppers um, that engages them to come back to your stand every time. It helps increase the purchase quantity per customer and it increases the number of frequent shoppers that you have. Also having customers that will act as brand ambassadors will also support your business. Um, so in the community and be like, hey, Hey, where did you get that bread? I got it at the um, Earth's Bounty Bakery. It was amazing. You should go check it out next farmer's market. Also, understanding your customer base and their likes and dislikes likes is very helpful. And that kind of, you know, takes some time and experience. But once you engage more with your customers and start learning their stories, you'll also know what they like and don't like. Um, all of this improves customer service. So offering those little simple, like, you know, business card size, stamp punch out cards um, are very, very helpful. Um, and at the end, you will get satisfied customers because that's what we want. We want customers to come back and back and visit us more and more and more. So we sell out every farmer's market day. <laughs> um, so hopefully 
this helped you a little bit um, get in the mindset of farmer's market season that's about to kick off and we are very excited. Um, Caroline, Ideas, and I serve as co-managers to the Martin Farmer's Market, but we also run the Northwest Tennessee Local Food Network, which is here to help support your farmer's market and any vendor information. We do a lot of farm to school programming, so we're always looking for locally sourced goods to source into schools um, and to nourish our children and the connections that they have with local food. I also wanted to thank Christopher Wayne and Eric Hassert from GrowNewYorkCity.org because um, we used their slides and modified it um, for our region. So thank you all very much for joining us today. And if you have any questions, feel free to contact us. We are happy to help. And if we don't know the answers, we can seek answers together. All right, have a wonderful day and happy farmer's market season. Bye.